Hello, everyone, and welcome to Embracing Your Essence on Lilydale Radio. Thank you for joining me tonight. I am Colleen Vander Zyden, registered medium here at Lilydale. And as you are joining in, please do say hello and where you're from. I've got a nice, fun show planned for this evening, and we'll have lots of time to answer questions and all of those things as we go. So, as I said, we are going to be talking about spiritual growth, and we You'll also, uh, I'll give you a few ideas, a few tips to help you um, grow spiritually, some things to think about, and I'll answer your questions and do some intuitive guidance or many soul readings, etc. And say hello as you join in. Hello, Dan. Perfect timing. And I will uh, just do some details first before we get to tonight's topic. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, let's see. Colleen Vander Zyden is who I am, registered medium here at Lilydale Assembly. I am a certified intuitive spiritual life coach, author of the book, Courageously You. And I am a longtime spiritual teacher as well as a professional violinist, just for some little interesting information right there. And lilydaleassembly.org is where you are going to find out everything that is happening at Lilydale. And we have our summer season coming up soon. Um, I'm not sure of the date. I think it's June 24th, whatever that Friday is. And we go till Labor Day. And we have so many things planned for this summer. If you haven't yet gotten your program book, you can call the office or send a message through Facebook and they will let you know how to go about getting a physical program book. Lots of things happening. So I'm just going to say hello as people are joining on. We've got Jan. Hi, Mary. Hi, Debbie. Paula. Silvana. Hi, Silvana. Alyssa and Charity and Meg and Eric. And so feel free again to say hello as you're joining us. Um, what else do I need to talk about? Some details. Um, oh, yes, for the summer. So coming up to the summer because we have lots and lots of workshops and all sorts of things happening here in Lilydale. If you are planning to come to Lilydale and you are wanting a reading with a medium, you must book in advance. It is very difficult to find a medium last minute, particularly in the summer. So you go to lilydaleassembly.org, look for the tab that says find medium, and you can go from there and see see who you want to have an appointment with. Almost everybody has a website and we definitely have emails and phones and those things. So lots of different ways you can contact people. And I just wanted to mention that. I thought that was important. So tonight I am going to talk about spiritual growth, how to accelerate it, just a few ideas to help you with that. I'm going to do some intuitive guidance. So if you have something going on in your life that you'd like some suggestions on, or I will also do some mini readings like mini soul readings uh, or whatever happens um, as I'm here. And you want to be on my page, Colleen Vander Zyden, medium and intuitive life coach, so that I can see your comments as you are on my page. If you are on Lily Dell's page, I cannot see your comments. So I said hello, I think, to Alyssa, but maybe not. So hello, Alyssa and Charity and Meg. I do feel like I did that already. And Doris and Bambi. Bambi, nice painting. And Darlene, nice to see you guys. So we are going to have lots of time for readings and questions, etc. So uh, feel free. I'll tell you when you can start asking them and we will go from there. But what I want to talk about first is the shifting energy that we have out there right now. There is so much energy. We have been in a consciousness shift for quite some time now. The eclipse energy. Did you guys feel the eclipse yesterday? And did you notice they said feel the eclipse? We watched it, of course. Um, but also it was a really interesting shift in energy. And then I said to Greg, it's so weird. I feel peaceful and motivated and inspired all at the same time. It was a really strange, wonderful feeling. And it was definitely one of those experiences. So, you know, the once in a lifetime, as they say, events. But, you know, being an energetic person myself and really enjoying energy and how it works, I found it um, to be... I don't know how to describe it. It was just so serene and surreal at the same time. So if you have noticed, particularly in the last week leading up to the eclipse, and things are still happening here, if you have noticed some changes, you feel a little bit different, you're wondering what's going on, it could be the energetic shift. So with all of this, we have had this energy shifting for quite some time. This is really the opportune time to accelerate your spiritual growth, if you are interested in that. And we want to 
do this, okay? You know, why do we want to accelerate? And I know a lot of people have talked to me about wanting to be on a spiritual path. They really want to live as their true self. They want to live as their soul. In some ways, it's a calling. It's like people are realizing there's more to life than the physical and not knowing exactly what it is. Eventually, it comes out at some kind of a spiritual path. Now, for those of you who grew up with a more traditional religion, there is a distinction in my mind between religion and spirituality, not that some religious people are not spiritual, etc., and vice versa, okay? But for me, when I think about spirituality, I'm thinking about more of a natural sense of spirituality, what feels right to me, because we're all on our own unique paths, right? And we can find that through religion, or we can find it in different avenues. There's so much going on out there now. So why do we want to accelerate our growth? Some people really, truly do want to grow spiritually, as I'm saying. Some want to develop their metaphysical skills. You know, as we're waking up that there's more to life than the physical, we want to work more with the energy. And it could be helping somebody through energy healing work. It could be helping someone through mediumship. We might want to study crystals and the energy of crystals, or we really enjoy yoga. Uh, all of these things are forms of energy healing and energy that we can use to connect with each other. So along with this, so we've got this you know, wanting to go in that direction. But also we recognize at some level, there are some benefits from this. If we are living in the truth of our soul spiritually, then we may have a life that has more contentment. Uh, we might feel like we have more meaning in our lives, more joy. We might have uh, different connections where we're really connected to somebody genuinely and sincerely. We are, as we like to say in the metaphysical world, raising our vibration by letting go of things that maybe are blocking us from living as our soul. And we are going to talk about some of those things, some myths and that kind of thing that's in there. So I'm just backtracking a little bit to see who's all joining us here right now. Hi, Jennifer. Nice to see you. And we've got a Sylvia. Yes, Jan's saying yes, all of the above, but today feel very tired and empty. Need to re-energize. Whenever we have an energetic... Uh, boost. I'll, I'll call it that. Whenever we have an energetic boost, what can happen is our body has to catch up. Okay. And that's that's all good. The body has to catch up. So when something has occurred, and like the eclipse, and we'll, we'll, we'll give the benefit of the doubt that the eclipse caused some energetic shifts. I believe it did, but some people may not. So when we have this, our bodies have to catch up and our vibration has to catch up. So we may be tired, more tired. And all this means is that we need to honor how we're feeling and do some self-care, drink more water, make sure we don't overdo. Yeah, a lot of us have a tendency to do too much. So we want to just check in with ourselves and see what is good for us. Hello, Julie. Nice to see you. And Elise and Sam and Yolanda and Fran and Charity said she felt joy and awe. Yes. Isn't it wonderful? It really is. It's so cool. And hi, Mike. I haven't seen you in ages. How's it going? And Karen, nice to see you guys. And Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Um, so with this, okay, accelerating our spiritual growth. Such an interesting topic because we as humans, right, we want direction. We want to get there, wherever there is, as quickly as possible. So we want to know like the easy path to our spiritual growth so we can live as our soul. And what this means is exploring who we really are. Okay, I'm always talking about who we are at the soul level, love and light. That's our authenticity, our truth, who, is, who, uh, who we really are connected to the divine energy. And if we learn more when exploring who we are, that means we also have to question who we are. And if we discover some things that maybe don't serve us, we don't agree with anymore, that bring us down or whatever, then we have to make some changes. And so we can then live in our soul's truth. Now, for me, I believe that learning more about ourselves is our spiritual path. Because we are, as we learn more about ourselves, reclaiming our soul, right? Remembering who we truly are at that soul level so we can live it. We want to be living that soul's energy in this physical life. Now, spiritual growth is not necessarily easy. We have lots of myths that... Um, 
we think about when we think, well, once I become more spiritual, this is how my life is going to be better, right? And so there's lots of those. I'll just mention a few. One is we think our life is going to be easier. The more we develop spiritually, that it will just be simpler and easier. In some ways it is, and in other ways it's not. Because what tends to happen when we're on a spiritual path is we have opportunities to practice living from our soul's light on that path, which means sometimes we have some challenges that can uh, really throw us for a loop. But that's to help us learn and grow, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. So in some ways, life will be easier. And I think, though, that many people think, oh, I'm more spiritual. Everything's just going to be so simple and easy now. It's not. We still live in a physical life, so we're all still going to have stuff, okay? So if you think that, no. Sometimes people want to grow spiritually, but they're scared of it because they don't know what's going to happen. You may think that if you grow spiritually, that you're going to discover everything you've ever done wrong, or you're going to go to hell if you have some leftover beliefs from childhood, uh, that you might have to be punished for your mistakes, or that you might have to pay in some way to become more spiritual. Okay, so sometimes those things can kind of get in our way. It's a little scary when we go to look at ourselves because in some ways we think that we might discover the worst parts of ourselves are who we truly are. And so we don't want to go there because it could be too painful. That's all false. Okay, yes, you're going to have some moments. Yes, you're going to see some things you've said or done that maybe were not the highest and best and most loving, but that's okay because we're human and this is how we learn. So another thing sometimes when we're going into spiritual growth is people think that we have to be happy all the time, right? We have to be happy, which can lead us to emotional bypassing where we don't feel our emotions. We think, oh yeah, they died, but I know they're in heaven. So it's okay. We've totally skipped the grief. We can't do these things. To grow spiritually, we want to feel all of our emotions so we can process them in a very healthy manner. We want to do that. Sometimes on a spiritual path, we think we have to meditate for hours in a day, and maybe we find meditation to be a challenge. So we feel like, oh, I'm not meditating enough, so I'm not spiritual enough. You can meditate in lots of different ways. It doesn't have to be sitting down in a chair and thinking of nothing. There's lots of ways you can meditate. Going for a walk is a form of meditation. There's creating something artistically, whatever. Those are all forms of meditation. So there's lots of things that sometimes can get in our way and we can kind of block ourselves a little bit. Another thing as we're growing spiritually, it's very helpful if we do have um, a spiritual teacher or a guide along the way, which is somewhat what I do on my radio shows every week, give you um, ideas and how you can live more in alignment with your soul and its purpose, help you live in your truth, help you find more joy. And with a, a, a nice, uh, helpful spiritual teacher, you can have faster growth, you know, because a good spiritual teacher are going to use our own experiences and say, well, I learned this. Oh, yes, I did that too. You know, if you say you thought you did something that wasn't good, we can say, hey, I did it too. And it's okay. But this is what I've learned from him. Now, there are lots of spiritual teachers out there, though. So if you're looking for a teacher, you want to make sure you check in with yourself to see what feels right. I have heard some horror stories from clients, etc., who had a spiritual teacher. And uh, I'll just think of one in particular, one situation in particular where the spiritual teacher told them they had to act this way, they had to do this way, they had to follow this plan. And after a while, they knew that wasn't right. And here's the thing. We are all living our own path, which means our spiritual path is going to be unique. And this is why we have so many people who are in so many different fields with so many different interests. How wonderful is this? So your path is unique. You want to work with somebody who resonates with you, where you think, you know what? I like that person. I like what they're saying. I like how they present things. I like how they speak to people. If someone ever, and this is my opinion, you do this with what you want. If someone ever says this is the only way and this is the only thing you can do and the only thing you should do, run the other way. There are so many paths. Don't fall into something thinking, well, they know more just because they're famous or they've been teaching a long time. 
Use discernment. If it feels right to you, then follow it. If it doesn't, then don't. So what we're going to do, we are, actually, I'm going to check and say hello to people because I know I missed some comments while I was off on my soliloquy there. Um, and so that's good. Charity says her body feels tired and feel energized in the mind and soul. And Mike, you've been ascending. Yay. Paula, definitely taking time this week to rest and integrate the new energies. So important. And hi, Linda. And we will definitely do that. Uh, Bambi, at totality, all the auto dusk lights turned on in buildings in downtown Dallas. An unexpected but sweet surprise. It was pretty cool. When we had totality here, a few seconds after it started, it started to rain just a little bit. It was so weird. It rained for like 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and then it stopped. It was really strange. Cindy, everything will make sense once I am officially spiritual, right? I know when I woke up spiritually and I was really enthusiastic about it, and I'm sure many of you have had a similar experience where you you something may have happened and you're just so enthusiastic and so happy about it and I remember thinking I've got to hurry I've got to hurry so I can get there there is no there and so everything will make sense once I'm officially spiritual is awesome it's so funny in a way right um let's see hi Annette how are you uh Greg, circumstances in our lives don't always change along the spiritual path, but how we navigate those circumstances can change a lot. Exactly. Exactly. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Amanda. Julie, you're one of the best spiritual teachers. Oh, thank you. You're sweet. Um, I just talk. <laughs> That's what I always say. So I do want to... Hi, Adele. Nice to see you. I do want to mention I'm going to give you three ideas to help you accelerate your spiritual path and your spiritual growth. And we'll see how we go. Hi, Arlene. I do want to mention my Reimagine Your Life retreat coming up very soon now. May... When is it? May 2nd or 3rd. Something like that. It's the first weekend in May. And uh, it's called Reimagine Your Life. And we are going to be doing all sorts of things to help you release blocks, to help you let go of things that are blocking your path from being being your true self, letting go of old stories, letting go of pain, letting go of grief, whatever it might be. Uh, we are going to work on intuition. We're going to do some little readings and things like that. So if you're interested in that, you can check it out on my website. It's uh, going to be at Celer in Celeron, New York, which is just a short distance away from Lilydale, close to Jamestown, New York, and um, uh, in a beautiful hotel. We're going to have so much fun. So check it out. And if you want to join us, we've still got a few seats left. Looks like about five. Um, so that's what we've got. So what we're going to do is I want to give you some ideas to help you accelerate on your spiritual path here. Um, how often do you have these retreats? This retreat is an annual one. I do it every year in May or June, this year May. Um, and we have other things. And uh, in our soul empowerment community, we do some retreats in there as well. Whole other topic that I'll hit another time. So the first thing that is really important, and actually these aren't necessarily in any order, I don't believe. Um, the first thing is to recognize that everything you're experiencing Everything you react to, everything that gives you some kind of an emotional response, reaction, is there for your spiritual growth. So this means any emotional reaction you have to something, anything that is happening to you, you could be happy, you could be sad, whatever it is, there is something there to help you on your spiritual path. I am a strong believer that everything that happens in my life is helping me get back to my soul's truth. Okay, that is one of my foundational beliefs. If it makes sense to you, take it. If it doesn't, then don't. So if you are feeling something, pay attention. Okay, particularly the, the feelings where we are uncomfortable, where we're distressed or unhappy. Those things can lead you someplace. So for example, and I'm just going to give you a couple really random examples. Um, say you're upset about one of the wars happening in the world, and there are a few going on apparently. So you're upset about this, and you feel hopeless, and you feel helpless, and you can't do anything about this, of course, right? But what this is, is when you recognize you're having this emotional response to whatever is happening, you can pause, look at it and go, what is this telling me about myself, about who I am at my soul level, how I can live more like my truth, in my truth of my soul. And if you're upset about something like that, it's probably telling you you're a very compassionate, caring and loving person. 
and you don't like seeing this destruction and hatred and killing, etc. You don't like seeing this. So now you have that information, and this doesn't mean you have to act on it and go, you know, I'm going to go and fight a war. Okay, you don't have to do that. It's simply showing you something about yourself. And you can recognize that these feelings, that even though they're distressing, are showing you that you're a wonderful person. So you can learn something about yourself. So say, uh, another example, say your boss yells at you for making a mistake. So, of course, you're going to have a, an emotional reaction to that, right? Where we might feel not good enough and think, oh, I'm always making mistakes. Oh, he, he, he doesn't like me. He's always yelling at me. And you get those feelings going inside of you. And then you might think that you're going to get fired. And then you might end up creating some kind of a story about how you'll be poor and homeless, all because you made one mistake. So to look at that from a spiritual growth perspective would be to go, okay, what am I learning about this? What am I learning about myself and how I'm responding to this situation? So it could be as simple as learning to believe in yourself and go, you know what? Yeah, maybe I made a mistake. It's okay. And then be able to go, I'm doing the best I can and give yourself some positive self-talk. It may also be to recognize that you are stronger than you think you are, or it could be as well that you didn't make a mistake, right? And you go, no, this is actually correct. And you're learning to stand in your power and say, actually, and say something to your boss in a different way. It can help you recognize that you have the power to change the story. You don't have to get stuck in the story where you're homeless because you made a mistake at work. So what we want to do is just kind of look at what's happening in our lives and see what we can learn from it that's going to help us live from our soul's truth. Now, an interesting thing here is that sometimes when we're thinking about living as our soul, being spiritual, that we sometimes put spiritual growth separate from our physical living lives. Okay, we put them in two different places. But actually, we want to live in our lives as a spiritual person. Okay, so if we're here alive at this very time, particularly at this very time, we are here to learn as much as we can about living as our soul so we can help in the shift of consciousness that is happening currently. So we want to live in this physical life. If you're in this physical life, we should be enjoying it as much as we can, right? We should be enjoying it. So sometimes we think again that the spiritual life is I'm over here and meditating in the cave for 30 days, which is great. If you want to go do that, go do that. But when you come out, how are you going to integrate that spirituality into your physical life? So we want to learn from life. We have lots of opportunities to learn about who we really are, who we want to be. We want to learn what's happening so we can grow and live as our soul. So anytime you get upset about something, ask yourself, what's going on? Is there a belief about yourself that is coming to the surface. Maybe there's a belief that you think other people should act a certain way, or maybe there's a belief that life should be a certain way. Maybe you're being triggered. These are all things to look at. Most things come down to a false belief about yourself that you are unworthy, not good enough. Part of our desire for other people or life to be different is that we're attempting to control situations we have no control over. We want them to act another way. And so we're resisting how they really are. Okay, so that's a whole different department. We want to be focused on ourselves. What can we do? Okay, so we want to explore our reactions and then learn from them. We want to know who you really are. And we want to know who do you want to be, right? Who do you want to be? What an important question. If you are living in your soul's truth, you know, as your spiritual being, who would you be? How would you act? What would you do? What would you say? These questions can guide you as you're moving 
into your spiritual life. And even if you've been on it forever, there is always something more to learn. I have been on my spiritual path for decades, and every day I learn something new about myself, how I respond to something, how I react, how I've gotten out of my power by letting my emotions take over, or whatever it might be. So this is a never-ending adventure. It's not going to be all of a sudden, now I'm 65 and now life is great and I never have to work again. No. But if we can look at it all as an adventure, we'll have more fun as we're learning this. So you want to learn. When we do this, sometimes we start to recognize that we are, we judge ourselves. Let's put it that way. We judge ourselves, right? Uh, sometimes we might find out that we're rude or mean, and sometimes we might discover that we overreact. So when we look at all these questions about who we really are and how we're living our lives, what can you do to feel better? It's all about self-responsibility. -responsi Remember how I said earlier that you have your own unique path? You do. So what's going to work for one person may not work for somebody else. But if we are all heading toward, moving toward living as our souls, which I believe we are, if we're all moving in that direction and we pay attention and go, okay, if I want to be a kind and caring person, but then somebody cuts me off in traffic and I'm screaming obscenities at them, I'm probably not a kind and caring person in that moment. And then we have a choice on what to do with that. We can forgive ourselves, we can apologize if they hurt us, whatever. So then we get to decide who we want to be, which is the next thing. So the first thing is pay attention to what's happening in your life. Pay attention, how you respond, how you react. How is this showing you about yourself? Then the next thing is decide Literally decide to make a choice about what kind of person you want to be. This is a great way to accelerate your spiritual growth. If you want to be on that spiritual path, how would you express your soul and its love? How would you express it? When I think about this, so if I'm, if I'm looking at myself and I'm going, okay, I want to live as my soul's truth, what would that look like to me? It would be recognizing love of course, with other people, with myself. Along with this comes the loving of ourselves, protecting our energy. Love is not unconditional love gone wrong, as I like to call it, where we sacrifice ourselves for everyone around us. That is not loving ourselves. So we have to look at all different angles here. So if I'm living as my soul, I wanna be loving, I wanna be kind. You might have a different thing. Maybe you long for peace. Maybe that's what your soul is looking for, whatever it might be. So you want to decide what would it look like. And then I suggest you pick one word that represents that. Maybe it's authentic. Maybe it's genuine. You know, maybe it's embracing your power of choice and being intentional with it. So pick one thing and then live from that every day with intention. Every day. Being on a spiritual path, growing spiritually is not a immediate, oh, I'm enlightened. It's the choices we make every day that help us step into our soul's power. Isn't that amazing? Just these little choices. And sure, there are going to be days when we fail miserably and other days where we might fail just a little and then other days where we make it and we're like, oh, I was so nice to that person. And then that little inner critic pops in and said, ooh, you're bragging now. You're too proud of yourself. And you could say, no, it's okay to acknowledge when I do something well, when I live in my truth, when I live from love and light, it is essential. Okay, so you can see as I'm talking about this, some of those old beliefs that can come up, that can pop up as we're living our lives, doing our best to live as our soul in the love and light. And sometimes these beliefs will come up and we think, oh, they're going to think I'm selfish if I do that, or that's wrong, I shouldn't do that, or I shouldn't say no to this person because they're counting on me, even though I had 300 other things I wanted to do at that moment and I really was looking forward to this one but I really should go help them. So you can see there's a lot here. So you wanna pick one thing. 
I don't know which one feels right to you. So you want to decide who you are and then live with intention from that one idea. Do it for a week, a month, a year, however long it takes. Okay, you'll learn so much and accelerate your growth. Sometimes when we're accelerating our growth, we pick and choose too many things. And so it's kind of like the New Year's resolution. I'm going to lose weight, run 300 miles a day. I'm going to do this and this and this and this. When really we just need to do one thing and maybe it's drink more water and that would take care of it. So we want to pick one thing and work with that. Okay, so the first thing I talked about was looking at life situations and seeing what you can learn about yourself. You can learn uh, something about how it's going to help you get to your soul. The second one is decide who you want to be. The next, I'm going to actually look at the comments for a second because some of the comments have gone by and I've been just chatting away here and I probably missed some good ones. Well, you thanks. Thank you, Pamela. That's sweet. Hello, Maureen. <laughs> Shannon, these questions are my questions. And which is a good point, and I should mention this. Sometimes when we want to know who we are, we can get stuck going, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I want. Okay. And so when we get stuck there, it's hard to answer the question. So if you feel like you're frustrated, you don't know who you are, what you want, where to go, all of that stuff, just pick one of those things. Who do you want to be? Do you want to be kind? Do you want to be loving? Do you want to be generous? Whatever it is, pick what's important to you. Do you want to be authentic? I love that one. That's always a good one. Be you, because that's my message all the time. Be who you are. Be courageously you, hence the title of my book. So we want to pick one thing and just do that. And before you know it, you'll know who you are. So I just wanted to mention that. Hi, John. Nice to see you. Um, Amanda, thank you for the stars. <laughs> see you later, John. <laughs> Doris, I'm done with 3D. Let's raise our vibrations. Yes. Yes, Cindy says, the eclipse seemed to help me focus on being kinder and loving towards unloving people. Such a big one. Such a big one. <laughs> Pamela, you're so funny. Last week, someone flipped me the bird in traffic and I blew a kiss in return. It felt like a prayer for the angry. I love that. <laughs> they probably took, didn't take it kindly, but you know how people are. But that's a great one. Hi, Elizabeth. Guy, viewing the eclipse made me feel as if time stood still. I was in awe of what I was feeling and seeing. It really was a really cool feeling, wasn't it, Guy? It was awesome. So the next thing, and this is the last one, and then I'm going to be answering questions, uh, doing mini readings. So let me talk a little bit more, and then we'll get to that. And if you are on Lilydale's page... You want to come over here to my page on Facebook, Colleen Vanderzyden, Medium and Intuitive Life Coach, so that I can see your comments and you'll have a chance for a reading or intuitive guidance or question answering, whatever it is. Yeah. Debbie, that's always so hard. She's saying um, she used to know who she was until she lost her husband. And she went from two to me, and I had no idea who she is right now. And it takes some adjusting to get back to yourself. And I can tell you that you will get there. Uh, and the idea I just said about picking one thing and living from that will help because it'll give you a focus instead of going, I don't know who I am. It's, it's so different now. Okay. And Ron, yes, he says, when you find the first step, you'll see the next one and the one after. I always say that, that the... You take one step and one step is living from that intention. The next one always comes. It always comes. And we don't sit there going, oh, where's the next step? Where's the next step? No, because that's just going to get you caught in your head. You just go, I'm expecting it to be here. And there we are. And I'm going to talk about something related to that in two seconds. So... <sighs> Elizabeth says, I spent the eclipse with my kiddos and it was the most present I felt in such a long time. It's hard for me to slow down most days to, it scrolled on me, to feel that joy and it was much needed. I can relate. Um, I was very much that way for many, many years. I'm better now. I still have uh, my moments where I don't slow down very well. Working on it and I'll keep doing it. And for those of you who are wondering, we have a stars party challenge started. Um, and so for five minutes, they Facebook suggests you send stars. So there you go. How to do it. The clip or the link is at the top of this feed right here. Okay. So the third thing is to let go. 
Okay, so just three things tonight. There are so many different things I could tell you to accelerate your spiritual path. But Spirit said only these three tonight. One is using your life situations to grow. I'm going to keep repeating myself. The next one is decide who you want to be, what kind of person you want to be. And then pick a word that represents that and then live from that. Every choice you make, everything, you live from that. Love is the easy one. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's a simple one to choose. Let's say that. It may not always be easy because love shows up in different ways. The third one is letting go. Oh, our humanists, our humanists, our humanists. We do love to control, don't we? We want other people, again, to be different. We want our situations to be different. We try to force things to happen. We have a dream or goal and we force it and force it and force it. And sometimes it works and most times it doesn't. So we want to let go of wanting people or situations to be different and recognize they are what they are. We want to let go of holding on to that story that disempowers you, that tells you there's something wrong with you, that tells you you'll never have whatever. We want to let go of that story. We want to let go of the painful emotions after we've processed them. We want to let go of them. Okay. We want to let go of the past if it's disempowering, if it makes us feel helpless, hopeless, or bad, if it makes us feel badly. What we're doing when we consciously, intentionally let go is we're moving into surrendering. This is a surrendering, a spiritual surrendering. This is trusting the spiritual flow to guide us. This is not I give up, though sometimes a good give up, help me God, is a great way to surrender. But the other surrender, the one where, oh, I give up. I'm never doing this again. I hate my life. That's not the surrender we want. We want the surrender where we go, okay, it's all going to be good. We're still going to move toward our dreams and goals, but we stay open for the spiritual flow, our guides, our angels to guide us. And here's the key, not being emotionally attached. Okay, this is called non-attachment. What this means, now, let's, now let me backtrack. Non-attachment is different than detachment. Detachment means we've, it's like we've shut our emotions down. Okay, non-attachment means we may still have those dreams and their goals, but we're not desperately wanting something. We're not desperately holding on to something. You know, I want you to act differently. That's desperately holding on to somebody else. If they act differently, then we're going to feel better. Okay, that's desperate. That's attachment. We want to move into non-attachment. The example I like to use, and it's in my book, Courageously You, is I was looking for houses uh, several years ago, and I wanted to buy a new house. And I was looking at houses, and I would go to these houses, and I'd look at them online, and I'd get really excited, like, this is awesome. This is just great. And then I'd get there and there was usually something really wrong with the house. You know, one was next to the bus garage and I am not an early riser and don't want to hear the buses warming up in the morning. One was next to the train tracks, as you can imagine, that wasn't going to go over either. So every time I went to look at a house, it was, it didn't fit. It, I, and I was so disappointed and I moved into, I saw myself do it. I'm never going to find the right house. Okay. And immediately, as soon as I saw I did that, I thought I have become attached to wanting a house instead of allowing the right house to come to me in the right timing. It's a different energy. It's the energy of positive expectation, but we're not so caught in it that we're we're sad or upset if things aren't working and which i should bring you to the next story of buying this house that i live in now in lilydale was i was looking for houses all over the place and i happened to tell a friend of mine i was looking for something and wanted it near water you know doesn't everybody and she told me this house was going to be for sale and i hadn't heard about it or anything and she said to me just go knock on the door so i came down and knocked on the door and uh they they're like hey colleen come on in i said i hear you guys might be selling your house and they said yeah and so they showed me around and by that that night i'm like i am buying that house it just felt right it fell into my lap basically and what was interesting, I heard later, the former owner said to me, her husband had said to her, I think we should put a sign on the house that we're selling it. And she said, no, I feel like a medium is going to come knock on the door and tell me they want to buy the house. And that was the day before I went. So isn't that interesting? So allowing ourselves to be guided to where we want to be. So if you ever start yourself feeling desperate, 
That means you're attached. As you notice that, you consciously, intentionally step back and make a choice to trust. Trust it's going to work. Trust the flow to guide you. Trust your guides to lead you wherever you need to go. It's amazing and it really works. It can be difficult sometimes because we're human. Okay, but if you're being intentional, this will work. The more we the more we let go, the freer we feel, of course. Okay? It's so important. So important. Okay, I just had a thought. <laughs> I got distracted. Sorry, you guys know me. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Can you offer insight in finding where you want to be when you know who you want to be? You mean where physically, Pam? Let me know about that. Uh, Dana, it seems the world is focusing more on love. This, yes. And if you've missed my speech about the, in the past few years, about the consciousness shift, what is happening is we are moving from a more divisive energy into the oneness energy where we recognize we are all connected and we are all love. The divisiveness and bullying and anger and hatred, et cetera, et cetera, we're seeing in the world today is coming up. So we can send more love toward it and strengthen our own love to counterbalance that. Okay, it has to come up to be brought to the light. It's challenging, difficult, and awful. But, but remember that. <laughs> okay, that's what we're doing. Um, yes. Let's see. This is my hardest challenges, right? Okay, check in the comments. And then thank you, Karen, for the stars. Um, is it possible to be a spiritualist, but also be Catholic? What is the differences? Is that an impossible thing to do? Um, okay, Pamela, I'm just writing down your name because I'm going to talk to you for a sec and I want that. So we want to, I'm going to backtrack two seconds. Okay. We want to allow, let go, allow, trust, surrender. If you're in pain, if you notice you're fixating on something, that means let go. Okay, so I'll wrap that up a little bit. So Pamela, less, yes, you can be a spiritualist and be Catholic at the same time. There are different belief systems, obviously, here. And here's where we can, and this is okay to do, pick and choose what feels right for you. Okay, I grew up Catholic. Some of what I grew up with, I do not agree with. And I did not agree with when I was a child either. That doesn't mean they're wrong. That doesn't mean somebody else shouldn't believe them or couldn't believe them. Whatever feels right to you. Some people very much enjoy that sense of the, the Catholic religion and the traditions and all of that. And that is fine to do. If it feeds your soul, definitely you can do that. The difference is... Well, there's a lot of differences, but the spiritualism, let me just do the spiritualism because and you'll know your Catholic part. The spiritualism is we believe we can communicate with people on the other side, of course. We believe that God loves everyone. Uh, we believe that we can access the healing energy, that we are all given the gifts of healing and prophecy and uh, mediumship if we want, and those are big there. Now, depending on which Catholic church you go to and what part of the Bible they read, there may be some dissonance there between spiritualism beliefs and the Catholicism. So it just depends. Um, so whatever makes you feel good. I am really of the belief that your spiritual path is yours and you get to decide what you want. Okay. Oh, we've, we've got a scammer, you guys. Okay. So do not answer this person, everybody. Liliana Reader or something. Okay. And I don't think Ashley's on tonight. So do not respond. It's a troll. Anytime somebody puts these messages in on my feeds or even sends you a message, if they are... Um, uh, and if they've made a fake page for me or other people, we will never send you a message in Messenger or Facebook and say, hey, you need a reading. Here's Give me your credit card. Nobody will do that. So everybody ignore this Liliana Reader person, okay? Okay, so you guys. Yes, camera alert. It's a troll. Do not respond. Yes. Um, okay, now, readings, questions. You have things like that. Now is the time. Okay. As you're getting ready to post that stuff right now, I'm just going to say one more thing. To accelerate your spiritual growth, you need to be aware. 
awareness is key. That is the beginning of everything. You have to be aware of how you respond. You have to be aware of how you want to respond. You have to be aware of what you're thinking. You have to be aware of if you believe what you're thinking, if it's true, if it's helpful. You have to be aware of if you believe um, anything is true, whatever those beliefs might be. You have to be aware of who you are at the truth of your soul, love and light. You have to be aware of your power that you have to go in a different direction. Okay, awareness is key. You want to be curious, awareness and curious, and that is going to help you accelerate your spiritual growth. Okay, now somebody, I saw somebody gave them somebody attention. Write something that gets my attention is what it says. Okay, uh, you addressed my question before you read it. You are still a rock star. Thank you. Uh, yes, reported her. Good. Thank you. Would love a reading. Oh, it's Okay, let's see. Oh, I, this person is taking up so much of my space. Okay, so if you guys want a reading, you want a, a you have a question you want to ask, etc. You have to be on my page. Remember, Colleen Vanderzyden, medium and intuitive life coach, not Lily Dale, because I can't see her. Okay, Carol Monty, coming to you, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go as quick, quickly as I can, you guys, so I can hit as many people as possible. Now's the time to start writing if you want something. If you don't want something, I'll end early. Whatever. So, Carol, loving, 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 loving your energy right now um okay when i'm checking in with your growth i have to tell you i feel this i love when i feel this what this means to me and uh spirit always gives me motions and things like that and and visuals like that i feel a rapid incline and then i feel i'm going over here okay so it's not straight up it feels to me like it's this way which is telling me that you may have a surprising uh adventure that is going to help you with your spiritual growth which feels to me like it's something Okay, it's like, okay, tell me, y'all tell me if this is right. I feel like you have a plan. You have an idea what you want. Okay, this is this part. I see you going up. It's good. It's good. It's laying the foundation for everything. And then it's like something catches your interest and you're over here. And then it goes really fast there. So keep your eye open for something unexpected, something new, something where you, you maybe have never even considered. So if something pops up, just go and follow it, okay? This might have to, to do with a metaphysical field. Uh, it might have something to do with just an interest. And I don't mean to minimize it by saying just. Uh, I have something to do with an interest or something that just catches your attention. Everything in our lives is helping us, remember, grow spiritually. So even if you get... A knitting class catches your attention and you go to that, but then you learn something which might lead you to something else. So it is kind of cool. And I have to tell you, Carol, it feels like it feels like it's going to move really fast. Okay. Loving that. Ooh. Ah, okay. I'm backing up so I can get some more, um, more comments and avoid the scammer person. <laughs> Okay, Jennifer, um, she's been feeling lost lately with her career. I know how I want to feel, but I'm fighting with the logistics of being a single mom and getting there. Yes, our human side shows up there, Jennifer, doesn't it? Because our human side is like, we want it now. We want it, we want it, we want it now. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, I don't know if you're enjoying your career and you want to stay there or anything like that, but... Okay, knowing how you want to feel is the key, and you say you know how you want to feel, okay? <sighs> what I tell people when they set intentions is to pick how they want to feel and focus on that always, always. So say you want peace, just picking something. Say you want peace, and maybe you go to work and your job is a little bit up and down or stressful or something. But if you have chosen to focus on peace, then you will find those peaceful moments. You'll also be putting out the energy so that more peace comes to you. Even if there's turmoil around you, you'll have more peace because you'll be responding from a more peaceful perspective. Okay, so this is important. Being a single mom is hard. Let's just all acknowledge that. That is hard because you've got all these things you have to do so that everybody eats and sleeps, etc. And you have to work, etc. So give yourself some grace and recognize that you can't do everything immediately. 
Okay, it's definitely, your life is definitely different than my life being retired and my kids are old. And I mean retired from my other job, not this job. And my kids are adults now. It's a lot different. And I remember when my kids were young, it was, it was hard. But what I would do is I would make a point, good point. I would make a point of having time to myself whether it was early in the morning, and I am not an early riser, but I got up sometimes early in the morning, or later in the evening where I had some time to just breathe and be still and kind of get back into who I am, where I am, where I'm heading. Time goes by so fast before you know it, you'll be where I am. And you'll go, I can't believe it. It was so fast. It's over that part. So give yourself grace and go with that. Interestingly, my guide is telling me that with this, with what I'm telling you about the word kind of thing and focusing on that feeling that you want, that that is always going to help you with your job. And I'm wondering if you're not going to be getting a change there. Okay, I'm wondering about that. Not 100% on that, but I'm feeling something shifting there. Um, but focusing on how you want to feel and you already know is going to help you with that. Okay, give yourself some grace and don't be impatient. Okay, da, 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 da. I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Um, sometimes I do health readings, but that's tricky because, you know, it's medical stuff and that runs into difficulty. I only go there if my um, guide brings me there. Uh, Zena, I believe I messed up and failed a test. Uh, I'm assuming you're talking about a life test not a test test like school test when i should have followed my instinct i didn't i feel guilt over it i hope i can be forgiven here's the beautiful thing Zena. uh this is gonna sound a little weird right now i am in a i am a really big believer as you probably have have know now in the fact that whatever happens is supposed to happen so if you believe you messed up and failed a test, that you made a wrong choice, didn't listen to yourself, that you were supposed to do whatever you did, because there's a lesson within that for you, okay? And if you feel guilt over it, it may be, of course, you mentioned the, the key word here, I hope I can be forgiven, it's forgive yourself, for that, which means letting go of the pain and anger and whatever it might be, upset, whatever. And notice how powerful your beliefs are. You believe you messed up, okay? And that's causing the guilt. But what if you didn't mess up? And what if whatever happened was supposed to happen in exactly that way to teach you more? And if that's the case, you didn't mess up. I did a radio show once several years ago that was on uh, there are no mistakes, that there are no mistakes. Everything is in order, okay? This doesn't mean we like everything that happens to us, but if everything is in order and there are no mistakes, what does that mean? That means we're back to we can learn something about it, okay? So for you, Zena, it's going to be a matter of self-forgiveness and maybe thinking about it that way might help you go, hey, you know what? I mean, we all know we can't go back and change the past, but that doesn't mean logically just because we know it, we can immediately let go of that, that sense of guilt or whatever. But if we look at it from a different angle and recognize there's probably something to it, some reason we experienced it, like what, what could you ex have uh, learned from only this experience? What could you learned from only this experience that can help you get back into your soul's truth and your soul's truth has the love and the forgiveness in it um okay let's see okay let's do this uh debbie debbie how are you debbie i feel like i need to talk to you okay this is so cool i am feeling right now um i 
I've got blue, I've got green going together. It's like a turquoise -y, but it's also separate at the same time. Okay, and I love when I get colors in because then I, I like to talk about what the colors mean to me. So blue and green, blue is communication color, green is the heart color. I put them together though, and it gives me a power here, okay? It feels like a spiritual power for you. And I like this feeling particularly because I know, because I know you, I know you're enthusiastic and I know you like learning about new things. This is so interesting. You are really good with people and I... And I'm talking beyond what I know about, okay? And I am wondering if you are particularly helping somebody right now who is having health concerns because I feel like you intuitively know what to say and what to do. And it may or and and you know it's so interesting because it's the medical thing. I I think did you used to be a medical person? Anyway, it feels like you just intuitively know, and I feel like you're helping somebody. It's very insightful. And this is beautiful. As you're doing this, what's happening is you are spreading the love from your own soul, and that is helping other people. If you love the color green and blue, I would have that around you just because it'll strengthen that ability you have. You feel very intuitive to me right now. So if your intuition is going off the charts, um, keep going with it because that's what it feels like. It feels very natural. Okay, I'll just leave that with you. Um, Amy, Elizabeth. Amy, Elizabeth, that's one person. I needed to hear fixating on something. Let it go. Thank you for that. Could I please get a message? Okay, Amy. Oh, Amy, are you a big thinker? Um, because I just got this feeling in my body that I frequently get when somebody's always going back and forth and trying to figure things out. Um, you did mention about fixating, but it's it's beyond that. Um, I just feel a lot, a lot of back and forth and thinking and thinking and thinking. And, um, and I'm wondering, too, if you get some, like, uh, nerves in your stomach with that, too. Here's the thing with you, though. When you came into this physical lifetime, your soul came in here for two, per well, more than this, the two I'm picking up right now, okay, as I am feeling joy with you and I'm feeling connection with you, okay, joy and connection. The connection tells me you're probably pretty good about connecting with people. I wonder if you might have um, done a little bit of the self-sacrificing, people-pleasing kind of thing, uh, because it seems like it's second nature for you to connect with people. And but, and also with that, there's this sense of joy, because I know you really do like helping people and being there for them. I want to turn that back around because I focused out here on the external. And I want to turn it back around and have you focusing on your soul and the joy that is in your soul. I'm wondering if you're feeling a little disconnected from yourself. Not quite, you know, like, ah, I'm not really sure what I want, where I'm going, who I am. I think I do, but I don't really kind of feeling. It feels that back and forth thing again. And so what we want to do is get you focusing here inside this would be the second thing I talked about earlier, which would be deciding who you want to be. Because who you want to be is who you are. Okay, so if you want to be love, you want to be light, you want to be joy, you want to be peace, whatever it is, deciding to do that and using that as an affirmation intention for moving forward. And I also want to tell you too, that you're actually much stronger than you think you are and that you can say no. Okay, I'm not sure why my guide told me that, but I'm assuming you're going to know what that's talking about. Okay, anyway, I'll leave that all with you, Amy. That was fun. Okay, let's see what else I have. Hey, Debbie, yes, I retired from medical. I thought so. You really helped me. Good. I'm glad that made sense because um, I, was, I was like, I don't know. Um, okay, Charlene, I'm new. Would love... Um, scrolled. I'm new, would love a message, if you have any. <laughs> it always scrolls on me, and I'm just like, woo. So, okay, Charlene. So what I do, Charlene, is sometimes I, I connect in with a soul. Uh, sometimes I connect with, with colors. Uh, sometimes other people, you might resonate with whatever I say for somebody else, and that's just spirit reaching as many people as possible. So, Charlene, what I want to do with you is a mini soul reading, and what I want to do, oh, this is interesting. 
feeling. Okay. And with you, what I'm feeling is healing. Okay. And by that, I mean healing abilities that your presence can heal other people. I don't know if you work in any of those kinds of energetic healing fields or physical healing fields or anything like that. Um, it's similar to the person I was just talking to with the the sense of connection and the sense of joy. For you, I get that healing vibration. I feel like you you must be quite the empath because I feel you picking up on people's energies and again, like the other person, knowing what they need and helping them. I would like to know if you do any energy healing because this is so strong for me right now. And do you also like crystals? I want to acknowledge crystals around you. And I want to acknowledge the clear quartz crystal that accelerates um, what we want in life and strengthens us as well and gets rid of negativity too. For some reason, I want to tell you that. Um, and that will be fun. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay, this is a really weird thing. And I have to ask it because it's just so weird. Is your closet organized by color? Ah, just because I saw color and I saw it being organized. And I just want to know that right now. Color healing is a fun thing to do. Okay, so I'll just give you that there, Char Charlene. Was it Charlene? I scrolled so fast I lost my name already. Uh, whoever I was talking to. <laughs> I'll give you that and see. Oh my gosh. I have so many things to say. And mess da, 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 da. I'm looking to see. Yeah. Hi, Ron. I'm so glad you're back. I have strong intuitions and now I need to follow those. Okay, good. Zena, good, good, good. Um, I'm still scrolling, you guys. I know it's nine o'clock, but I'll, I gotta, you know, say something else. I'm sure of it. Okay, thank you. I need to make Lilydale a trip. Okay, remember, you guys, if you come to Lilydale and you want to go to a medium, make sure you make your appointment in advance. A lot of us have uh, online schedulers, and you can make them um, right online. You don't need to call us or anything. It's awesome. Okay. Um, da -da 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 -da. Oh, it scrolled really fast on that. So I'm just going to take that um, as a sign. Okay. Uh Kim, would love a message if you have one for me. That's a nice, easy one. <laughs> I guess we'll find out in two seconds. Okay, so Kim. Huh, this is interesting. So Kim, the first thing I felt um, is I was feeling pain in my back. Okay, this does not necessarily mean you have pain in your back. What it sounds to me is that you carry a lot of weight on your shoulders. And I mean, I feel like you feel like you have a lot of responsibilities and obligations. And that always tells me if I ever pick that up, it's that you're a person who is really responsible. Um, not closet, not coordinated. <laughs> That's funny, Charlene. I just had to ask. Um, so Kim, it's that sense of... Um, I forgot what I was saying. Totally lost my mind. Um, okay. Hold on. It may or may not come back. Oh, yes. Thanks. The back pain. The the responsibilities. Um, it feels like responsibility and obligation here. And that tells me you're the responsible person and that you do help take care of people. And I can see... Boy. What I, I want to visualize for you is I want to have things going through your body out into the ground, a visualization of releasing and letting go. I want releasing and letting go. If you get stuck in your head, this can really help. And you can do this motion as well, just with the intention of releasing and letting go of anything that is no longer serving you, anything blocking you, whatever it might be. I really want that for you um, because you have such a good heart. You really have such a good heart and you're so good at this connecting with others too and the empath skills too. It's really amazing. So I want to clear your energy out. That's that's a good message for you, I think. We'll see. Oh, Jill, I used to do all closets in color order. Okay, isn't that interesting? Ah, oh, so wild. Okay, it's so funny. I have no idea why that came up, Charlene, but it popped into my head. <laughs> I'm not coordinated either. I just saw this thing. If you ever do go into um, healing, check into colors, um, Charlene, too. 
because it's so clear. Okay, I am after nine, so I probably should stop. So definitely check out lilydaleassembly.org. See what's coming up this summer. See all the workshops happening. I'm teaching three of them this summer. There's a whole bunch of good stuff. Maybe one of these weeks I'll go through and give you some of the stuff that's coming. I'll tell you what's happening. Um, and my website, ColleenVanderZyden.com, uh, BeCourageouslyYou.com. They both work. Uh, and check out my retreat, Reimagine Your Life In-Person Retreat. I've got room for, I believe, five more people. So that will be fun. And um, come and join us. It'll be so much fun. And I think next week what I'll do is just, I'm just going to answer your questions. So you better come with a whole bunch of questions or it'll be a short show. Answer questions, do mini readings, whatever it is. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not even going to give you little hints of anything next week. We're just going to chat, chat, chat. Okay, so you guys have fun, and I will um, see you next time. Bye.